must have started with the hospital based cancer registry at the Sri Krishna Institute of Medical Sciences now i think about 2 years back so to emphatically tell you that yes what you are saying is correct uh, figures will come out in the next 3 to 4 years then it may be possible to conclusively say that yes in fact it is so for the moment you will have to suffice by just an observational analysis and i think people who are treating this disease in this part of the world, of of the country which means me and the other oncologists also will share this opinion and i don't think there will be a divided opinion that the cancer cases here are plentiful cancer is a non communicable disease and therefore it strikes you more towards the later part of life not to say that there are no cancers of young age there are <clears throat> cancers of children are quite plentiful like blood cancers lymphomas but they are specific for that age group but on the other hand non communicable diseases are basically strike you towards the later part of life so if you have people living longer which you do have the number of cancer cases increases automatically the overall effect is what you see that yes there is almost a cancer in every second house in kashmir these are the cancers that you have common here you have esophagus you have stomach you have a lot of colon you have prostate cancer in the men you have lung cancer as well in the females you have a lot of breast cancer you have a lot of ovarian cancer you don't have cervical cancer as much here like the rest of the country you have a lot of oral cancer you don't have any oral cancer because people don't chew tobacco and pan a lot so there the cancer demographic varies in different parts of the country as it varies from the developing world to the developed world uh, jammu has a slightly lesser rate uh, but they have a different cancer they have a cancer of the gall bladder very common in that area they have a cancer of the urinary bladder stone producing cancers where stones in the gall bladder keep rubbing against the gall bladder wall and you leave them alone and you leave those gall bladders alone perhaps succumbing to the old theory that a stone which does not give you pain is to be left alone but these stones keep irritating the the bladder walls as also in the urinary bladder and produce a lot of cancer so the type is different and perhaps the cancer recording and awareness levels are still lower so in the real sense whether there is a difference in intensity in incidence we won't be able to say that so in the end when <coughs> their recording improves awareness levels in the jammu division improve and also the treatment facilities in the jammu division improve you may come to a different conclusion Uh, comparatively within the state i think kashmir is better off as far as cancer facilities are concerned but this is all about active treatment of cancer we are not even speaking about prevention we are not even speaking about uh, screening of high risk cancers though the government hasn't still woken up to that but i think the numbers are too many the infrastructure is not as much this place should have had a cancer hospital of its own long back i don't know why it never happened also diagnostics has improved in the last 10 years but not up to the mark still people have to wait for these tumor marker levels people have to wait for immunohistochemical diagnosis after biopsies people have to wait for pet scans and go outside the state quite often people have to wait for radiation machines of the right type the newer models linear accelerators which give more concentrated and more effective doses without causing too much of scatter and side effects so people have to go through a lot of gruel but above all i hate to say that but the attitude is not right a cancer patient needs empathy but these people carry on with the disease sometimes for months for years sometimes even scores of years sometimes decades and then at some point of a time the cancer reoccurs 
unfortunately more often in this part of the world because we tend to diagnose them at late stages and the results are not that great. So it can be psychologically draining and I, I understand that there is a need for the oncologist also to protect his or her sanity. But that doesn't take away from the fact that one needs to invest psychologically in terms of time, in terms of effort, in terms of the right attitude <coughs> in these patients. So that, according to me, is more important than a PET scan. It's the empathy. Answer to your question about Baltistan may very simply be that it's a genetic difference. Because cancer has a lot to do with the genetic message <coughs> in your genes. The kind of DNAs and the way they are coded together and how they are matched together decides whether you get it or not. That's why I'm sure you're aware of the newer tests of genomics and molecular diagnosis that have come into the fore now. If the government or some group here could only take it upon themselves to create the awareness amongst people that need to buy medical insurance, you would have done a great job. It would be a tremendous, impactful thing to happen. Just if someone convinces people in Kashmir that they need to think in terms of medical insurance. They haven't still understood the concept. When I started off, I concentrated, I was younger, I would deal more in numbers. I'm not sure the quality was adequate at that point of time. But as you grow older, you look at the same thing in a different way and more you go deeply into it and and for some of us like particularly like for people like me I, I don't stay across the table as a professional giving advice and that is it my role goes beyond that I tend to get involved with the family just find out what the financial status is try to give them advice on that try to see socially how they can manage so it's a little bit more than that as a human being as who I am so, so it starts taking more time, you worry about things like diet, you worry about things like finances. So that takes a little bit more time. So I think the quality of treatment that I give now has definitely become better and the quantity has had to decrease. So I now regulate that. I, initially, any number would do, but the quality would suffer. But now I, I think that let me see lesser patients. So to give you the numbers, I think on a... On, in an average month, I must deal with about, um, about 50 to 60 patients, new patients from, from this state. For 27 years now, I've been running an OPD here every month. On an average, the OPD has about 110 to 120 patients. So, which means only the months that I'm either traveling abroad, for a conference or for my outstation clinics. I, I do outstation clinics in Mauritius, Tajikistan, and Democratic Republic of Congo in Africa as well, once in two months. It is interesting. You see what is happening on the other parts of the world. And like I said, I believe that there is not only one way to doing a thing. People do the same thing in different ways. And perhaps all of them are right in, to, some, to some extent in their own ways. So it's interesting. It is a great learning. You meet different people, you meet different cultures, you see different attitudes. Therefore, one is able to get an idea of where we stand in that overall spectrum. 27 years at least, and a few months missed, maybe a month every year. About 100, average 100 patients. So 100 multiplied by 4 people in a family. So I come across that many people who are afflicted primarily or secondarily by this disease and I have interacted with all of them, most of them drawn from the rural areas of Kashmir.